I am Dr. Vaseem Sajad and today we will discuss how we can differentiate between epidermide cyst, dermide cyst and arachnoid cyst in the brain on different radiological imaging modalities. Epidermide and dermide cysts are basically the developmental defects and they are formed when the ectodermal elements are encompassed by the neural tube during development. So these are basically developmental defects. Now our goal as a radiologist is how we can differentiate whether it is epidermide cyst, it is dermide cyst or arachnoid cyst. Both even the three of them are cystic lesions. If we talk about the epidermide cyst, epidermide cysts are surrounded by are encapsulated by a thin epidermide layer and inside this epidermide layer is the cystic component which is composed of fluid and cholesterol or other fat granules of different compositions. In dermide cyst, its capsule is formed by the whole dermis. Its capsule is thick and its contents are all the dermide elements. They can be fat, they can be hair, they can be teeth even. All the dermide elements can be seen in the dermide cyst. Arachnoid cyst is basically a CSF which is lined by a thin arachnoid layer but this CSF is not communicating with the ventricular system of the brain. So these are the few characteristic features of epidermide, dermide and arachnoid cysts. Now the most important sequence which is used to differentiate and the most important modality which is used to differentiate these three type of cysts is the MRI brain. T2 sequence is performed and T1 sequence is performed. Arachnoid cysts are basically the CSF lined cavities. So their signals are similar to those of CSF. In dermide cysts there is fat signals and they are hyper intense on T1 weighted images and in epidermide the contents are also give signals similar to that of CSF but that signals depend upon the composition of the cysts. If the composition of the cyst is more fatty and the more cholesterol granules are present then the intensity of the signals increase but we can't differentiate between the epidermide cyst and the arachnoid cyst on MRI reliably. So the fusion weighted sequence is performed which reliably differentiates between the arachnoid cyst and the epidermide cyst. In arachnoid cyst there is no restricted diffusion and the signals are identical to that of CSF. But in epidermide cyst there is diffusion restriction and the signals are not identical to the CSF. That is the most important and the most significant distinguishing feature between the epidermide cyst and the arachnoid cyst. Arachnoid cyst, there is no restricted diffusion. In epidermide cyst, there is restricted diffusion. So then there is post contrast images. In post contrast images in epidermide cyst, there is variable degree of enhancement of the capsule while in epiderm in dermide and the arachnoid there is no enhancement of the capsule and on ct there is low attenuation epidermide cyst is low attenuation even the epidermide cyst is also low attenuation because it is mainly composed of fat and arachnoid cyst is also of low attenuation so ct does not add much value in differentiating between epidermide dermide and arachnoid cysts MRI is the imaging modality of choice to differentiate between epidermide, dermide and arachnoid cysts. T1, T2 sequences are performed. In addition to that, diffusion weighted sequence is most important for differentiating between the epidermide cyst and the arachnoid cyst. So location of the cyst can also add some value and the age of the patient can also add some value. Uh, Epidermide cyst is usually seen in children, in young patients, dermide and uh, arachnoid cysts are usually seen in the old age patients. So calcifications can also add some value. And now the complication is we talk about the compl complication of the cyst. Arachnoid cyst, there is no chance of rupture. 
in epidermoid cysts there is rare chance of rupture but in dermoid cysts they can rupture and the fat content of the dermoid cysts can spread in whole of the brain parenchyma and inside the csf so these are the few differentiating features and the most important is mri brain and the most important sequence is the diffusion weighted mri thank you